Hi, my name is Emily from Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club. This video is a compilation of book recommendations from people who either attend the book club or who are involved in the chat uh, on our Facebook page. We hope you enjoy the video and that you'll come away with some new books and authors to check out in the future. Hello, my name's Adam Parkin and I am the treasurer for the Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club. And the books I have chosen to talk to you about are the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. Um, you can see the first one here, I'll be reading a short excerpt from it. These are set in a future that imagines a more positive outcome for humanity. So for those of you who are wanting to get away from dystopian fiction, um, this might be for you. I'm going to read an extract from uh, one of the chapters that talks about a character called Kizzy. Kizzy was up too late, as usual. That had been standard procedure ever since she was a kid. When she was small, Papa would tuck her in with a story and a kiss and a hug from Tumby, her stuffed frog. Moments after the lights went out, her toes would start wiggling and her butt would follow suit, and before long, the idea of holding still and sleeping seemed super unfair. At regular intervals, Papa would come into her room, lift her away from her building blocks and tuck her back in, his patient voice growing ever wearier. Finally, Bar would get home from the evening shift at the water station and he'd say, Kizzy, sweetheart, please go to sleep. The blocks will be there in the morning, I promise. That was true, but he missed the point. While the actual physical blocks would stay where she left them, her brain was always full of new configurations that she hadn't tried yet. If she didn't get them out before she fell asleep, they'd be totally forgotten by morning when she'd be distracted by the promise of pancakes. As an adult, Kizzy had found ways to better manage the blueprints in her brain. She kept her scrib right by her bed so that she could fill it with sketches and notes without leaving the warmth of the blankets. But even so, unfinished projects often kept her up late. It always started with one last circuit, which turned into, I bet I could fix this, and just a few more tweaks, and then bam, breakfast time. If you want to find out more about Kizzy and the other crew members of The Wayfarer, please check out The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. The other books in the series follow different characters in the same universe, so you can read them in any order, but it helps to read the first two in the order they were published um, because some of the characters from the first novel appear in the second one and it'll just help your understanding a bit better. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emily and I'm one of the organisers of Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club and Literature Festival. I'm going to recommend two books today. The first is a young adult fiction book. I really love young adult fiction. Uh, because I find it often um, explores different identities and labels that you often don't see in other books um, and it's often uh, quite an easy read. The first book I'm going to recommend is Queens of Geek by Jen Wilde. Uh, we read this in the book club um, a little while ago and I absolutely loved it, uh, not just because of the pink hair on the cover, um, but I do wish that I could have my hair like that. Um, the main character is a bisexual woman. Um, they use the word bisexual, uh, which I love, um, and it's quite positive representation. They talk about some of the issues that she has um, being, with being bi bisexual. Um, also, one of the other characters um, talks about their social anxiety and panic attacks, um, and it's not something that I've seen represented much um, in books, uh, so I really like that as well. Um, I then listened to the audiobook of the sequel called Brightsiders, um, which has loads of queer characters in it, um, and I recommend both of them. Uh, my other book that I'm going to recommend is non-fiction. Uh, it's a new book called The Book of Queer Prophets. Um, it's cur curated by former Stonewall CEO Ruth Hunt. Um, I've just started it. I haven't read the whole thing, um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying that it is a book about um, by, by LGBT people uh, talking about their, their faiths and their religions. Um, and I think that's something that we don't really talk about much as a community. Um, so it's really nice to see um, some pos positive representation of that as well. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Quinn Brown and I am a member of the Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club um, Facebook chat group. 
and today I want to recommend this amazing book by my friend Yuri De Luca. It's called Tainted Beauty and she had to dig deep to write this book from her own personal words. Um, she is an amazing, amazing woman and a good friend of mine and I've started reading this book and so far I'm feeling all the emotions possible. Um, you need to really check it out yourself because I can't find the words to describe so far how importantly uh, important it is and how strong this woman is. Um, I, I'm really really proud of her and obviously having this copy is, is, is means a lot to me. Um, so if you want to check out this book I recommend you speak to Yvie uh, and she'll direct you to a link to the book itself. Thank you. Hiya, I'm Quimby, they, them. I'm a queer performance artist, writer, activist, um, and I've been asked as a member of Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club to recommend you all a book. Uh, I'm recommending We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib, because it's really good. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's so much in here. It deals with race, religion, uh, gender, sexuality, uh, and childhood trauma, misogyny, just so many really complex topics which are addressed in just beautiful prose. I absolutely love this book. I like, it's probably changed my life. It's changed the way I view the world. And yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, there's nothing else I can add to that in this, so I'm just going to read you a short extract. I started to think about the incredible lasting friendships I'd made over the years. With Andrew, with Abby and Megan. Maybe my friends, my chosen family, could be the loves of my life. As we grow into ourselves, we amass a network of friends who embrace us as we are and nurture us in ways we never were while growing up. My friends, my soulmates, see all of me, the messy and the tender parts. They know what needs to be celebrated and what still needs healing. Being surrounded by great people isn't a fluke. It's almost like solving a maths problem. Finding variables, adding and, subtract and subtracting to figure out a formula that works. Being surrounded by people who fuel you is intentional. I just think that's an absolutely beautiful passage and I think too often in the narratives in queer culture around found family it's kind of seen as uh, the moment you come out you're given a found family um, and I think this is just a beautiful reflection on these are relationships that you carefully build over years and sometimes it doesn't work out and I just think I just think it's a really beautiful reflection of that process of that complex ongoing uh, gro growth you have to go through as a queer person. Um, thank you for listening to me. Read it. It's really good. Um, goodbye. My name is Emily Roach and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of York. Although my thesis is on queer spoken word poetry, I'm actually going to recommend a piece of American prose to you today. And that is Andrew Holleran's Dancer from the Dance. Published in 1978, Dancer from the Dance was published in a year which saw a number of notable gay authors in America publishing important texts. Those authors included Andrew Holleran, Edmund White, Paul Manette and Armistead Maupin. The 1970s as the decade that followed the 1969 Stonewall riots and the decade that preceded the AIDS crisis of the 1980s and the 1990s, which would shape so many of these authors' later works, is known as the golden age of gay liberation. Dancer from the Dance really captures that sense of liberation, but there's also a feeling of foreboding that runs throughout the book. The idea that the liberation is perhaps fleeting, that it is going to be snatched away at any moment, that it is somehow incomplete.
Dance from the Dance is full of those kinds of contradictions that makes it such an interesting book to read. We know the characters like Sutherland and Malone quite intimately, and yet in many ways we don't ever really get to know them at all. We don't even really know who the narrator of the book is. At moments, it seems as though it is one single narrator. At other times, it appears as though there is a collective community of people sharing their recollections and experiences of those characters like Malone that feature throughout the book. There's also a sense of ambiguity when it comes to the city itself. This is very much a book about New York, about its nightclubs, the baths and Fire Island, which people go to at the weekend. However, the book is both a love story to New York and it's also deeply critical of New York in many different ways. It feels as though the gay men who are the characters in this book don't feel fully part of the city. They're part of the city's hidden spaces. There's a lot of scenes, for example, where people will leave the nightclub, the nightclubs wringing out the sweat from their t-shirts that disappears into the gutters and the cracks of the city and then slipping away before the sun comes up and the rest of New York wakes to go about their working week. The prose in this book is lush and evocative. Holleran has an incredibly poetic style that I really enjoy reading. I would say for anybody at all interested in contemporary American fiction that this is definitely a book to add to your shelves. It's very much of its time, and yet it still seems relevant today with some of the themes that it explores. It's undoubtedly dated slightly when read through a 2020 lens, but I do think it's a very important book and a wonderful read nevertheless. I hope if you do decide to pick it up based on this recommendation, that you enjoy Andrew Holleran's Dancer from the Dance as much as I did, and enjoy spending time in New York City with Sutherland and Malone. Hi, I'm Kirsty Smith. I'm the secretary of the Leeds LGBT Plus Book Club and a regular attendee. So today I wanted to talk about a book entitled Autobiography by uh, Christina Loren. Um, so this is a story of uh, Tana Scott, who has recently relocated from California to Utah um, in his final semester of high school, planning on having quite a relaxed time until he goes to college, uh, ends up being challenged by his best friend to, to a, a, a write a book <laughs> in that single semester, thinks that it'll be a walk in the park, so he decides to take, take the challenge up. Um, and that the book then sort of follows that, that sort of story of, of, of him writing, writing his book. Um, so I enjoyed this book. It was uh, quite a, a nice sort of easy read. It had lots of sort of feel good um, moments in it. And it was one of those books that I just sort of thought it kind of made me feel nice. So um, nothing heavy. And there's one bit that I wanted to read, uh, which is quite early on in the book. So hopefully no, no big spoilers. Uh, so here we go. The one and only time that I've ever seen Awesome Drunk was this past summer, which is also the one and only time she admitted that she was in love with me. I thought we'd been on the same page after our make-out session two years ago, but apparently not. Sometime after drinking four Mike's Hard Lemonades, but before shaking me awake on her floor and begging me with boozy breath to forget everything she'd said, she babbled for an hour about the secret feelings she'd been harbouring for the past couple of years. From the haze of my own inebriation and the tangle of her alcohol fueled incoherence, I remember only three clear sentences. Your face makes sense to me. Sometimes I get the weird feeling that I wouldn't be enough for you. I love you, but only a little. Being who we were, the only way to move past the potential for profound awkwardness afterward was to joke about it for a solid week. I love you but only a little became our new best friend's motto. Autumn tried to explain the logic of my face making sense to her a few times to no real success. Something about symmetry of features and how they're pleasing to her on an instinctive level. But it's still one of my favourite non-secretaires when I see her getting stressed about anything. I just say, Audie, calm down. Your face makes sense to me. And she breaks. Every time she laughs. The second sentence, sometimes I get the weird feeling I wouldn't be enough for you, hit too close to home. Although I'd been waking up the nerve to come out to her, after she said this, I changed my mind. Audie's words twanged with dissonant chord inside me, the inner conflict about what it means to be bisexual. 
there's a devil on one shoulder, the ignorant perception that I get from all sides, both inside and outside the queer community, who say bisexuality is really about indecision, that it's impossible for bisexuals to be satisfied with one person, and the label is a way to not commit. And then there's the angel on the other shoulder, who the queer positive books and pamphlets encourage me to believe, saying that no, what it means is I'm open to falling in love with anyone, I'm happy to commit, but the specific parts don't matter as much as the person. But as I've never fallen in love, and never felt that clawing ache for any one person, I never know which of them will end up being right. When Autumn said that not being about enough for me, I let it go and pretended I didn't remember. The problem is, I do remember. In fact, I obsess about it, while pretending I'm not painfully waiting for the moment when someone knocks me over, makes me feel sure about them in a way I've never been sure about anything in my whole life. So when Sebastian brother walks into our class and he sees me and I see him, I have the sense of falling sideways out of my chair. So I hope you enjoyed the excerpt and hopefully it will have inspired you to want to, to pick up this nice, lovely, easy read. Um, and um, we have so many different books that I've experienced at Book Club and this was just one of the ones out of, out of them that I, I really enjoyed and I hope you do too.